how do you know when a song is done and how do you manage not to, for instance, overdo elements? How do you manage to, to make it dynamic and to... That's, that's a process of, of learning, I guess, because I'm sure that in the past we overdid some things. And I think on this album, we, we did a perfect job concerning this. At least that's, that's how we feel about this album in the moment. Because, you know, I think the production is very well done. It's not overproduced. The songs are uh, not too complex, even though there is some, some really big stuff like Wheel of Time or also Sacred Words. But also this is within the boundaries, I think. But it's, it, it can be tricky, you know. Um, sometimes if you work too long on a certain song, uh, you might not be objective anymore. Yeah. And then that's when, when it gets really, really tricky. For example, you know, uh, when we worked on, on the song, Imaginations from the Other Side, you know, we had the whole song done after a month or whatever, I don't remember, remember exactly, but we didn't like the chorus. Okay. So then we started looking for a better chorus, and we did this for six or seven months. Yeah. And kept working on that song and working and working and working. The version that is on the album is the original version. So after those <laughs> six, seven months, we realized we are stupid idiots. The first version was perfect. So, you know, sometimes you just, I don't know, sometimes you just get lost. And then, of course, the help of a producer like Charlie Bauerfeind yeah. is, is, is very appreciated because he knows us. He's been working with us since, when was it, I think, 90 seven or something mm. like that so he knows us as characters he knows us as musicians and he perfectly understands our music and knows what is important for our music and sometimes he can say hey forget about this focus on that one yeah. instead you know and that's a good thing <laughs> so and, and as you said earlier you spend a few years between each album and now i understand why <laughs> 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 um why, why do you not make all the songs big and epic and include everything in Every song just make four or five epics. We like the variety. We, we want to have, you know, uh, ups and downs on the album. If every song would be like Wheel of Time, for example, then the whole album would be completely at its peak all the time. There would be no room in the music. Mm. You, you couldn't breathe anymore. You know, everything would be smashing you from A to Z. And, you know, that's why we... We, we, we want as many dynamics as we can get. So that's important for us to have, you know, big and complex songs because they are a part of our sound, as well as uh, the fast songs like, like Tenelon or A Voice in the Dark, the fast and aggressive heavy stuff. We have mid-tempo things. We have more acoustic things, you know, mm. folkloristic things. It's very, all those dynamics are very important for us. And, you know, they are very important to make an album a good one because you know if if we would have like 10 times songs like uh, a voice in the dark that would be boring in our opinion at least you know 10 times just pure aggressive speed metal that would be limiting to us just as we don't want 10 ballads and we don't want 10 mid tempo songs and we don't want 10 epic songs we want a bit of everything do you manage to listen to albums which are more like one one dimensional uh, of course I can listen to stuff like that, you know, but it, it depends on what you want to do. And yeah. that's, not what, what, that's not Blind Guardian's philosophy, you know, we want dynamics. Of course I can, you know, I have, I'm a metal fan since 81, and I have tons of albums that I still love that are not as dynamic as our new ones. Rain and Blood, album. for instance. For example, it's, it's 28 minutes straight in your face, and it works. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's still the Slayer album, and I still love that album. And, you know, it was perfectly fine for this album. Yeah. But that's not something that we want to do. We want to have the whole variety. For uh, you as a guitarist, what, what is it like, what is it that you focus most on? For me, important is uh, a solid guitar. For, you know, metal is music for guitars, obviously. So <laughs> yeah. for me, is uh, you know, I try to play very song friendly. You know, I don't normally I play rhythm guitar. There are a couple of songs in which I play leads too, especially older songs. But you know, I'm I'm focusing on giving the perfect layer, the perfect foundation for the songs. That's that's important for me. So I give a, a a fat, heavy sound foundation on top of which Hansi can sing or Andre can play his solos and stuff like that. 
So that I would pick is important for me. Mm. What is the craziest fan encounter you have been uh, you have had in your life? Because I mean, there are, must be diehards that really show their creativity and their appreciation for Blind Guardian. Yes, I mean we we've, <coughs> we've received all kinds of presents. You know, we've received books that people wrote in which we appear. We we received you know uh, instruments that people built for us. We received pictures, drawings, flags, all kinds of things. That's that's amazing to see how people become creative themselves, you know, and and give something to us like this. That's that's really a cool thing to see. Is there anything that you remember specifically? Um, I remember a guy. Where was he from? I, I remember. I I couldn't read that book, but he wrote a book. You know, there's even something from us on the cover and uh, as I said I, I could read I think it was from Spain I think the book is in Spanish yeah, it was yeah. something about us and stuff you know that was I found that very impressive now that we probably uh, stand at the edge of time <clears throat> what do you foresee for uh, humankind now the, the, the title is just you know more or less uh, people have been asking about this already yeah, of course said, what's the deeper meaning there is no deeper meaning you know it's like we love dealing with the topic of time there are a couple of songs, you know, Wheel of Time, Riding to Obsession, both are based on the Wheel of Time saga, then Tell yeah. is based on the Eternal Champions of Time again, the big issue. So uh, we like to have this, you know, in, 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 we've been thinking a lot about how to call that album, and we like the time aspect, that's why we put it at the edge of time, you know. Uh, we are always at the edge of time, <laughs> racing, racing after deadlines. <laughs> So um, that's, you know, there's no deep epic meaning behind that title. It, it sounded very well. It fits to all the songs. It fits to Blind Guardian. So that's how we came up with that one. Finally, when, when all songs are done, uh, when the album is mixed and all, and you have agreed which numbers, uh, which, which, which track is number one, which track is number two, and so on, mm -hmm. what do you feel when you know that now the routine begins? Now you mean, you know it's creativity, then it is routine, and then perhaps maybe even boredom when you have to play, for instance, Mirror, Mirror for the 111th time. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't see touring, which is obviously the next step. Or, or, or let's, let's put it like this, you know, when, when we are at that point that you just mentioned, then it means promotion starts or mm. tons of interviews. And, you know, touring actually is something that I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot because for me that's the highlight of being a musician, you know. I love writing songs, I love recording songs, I love seeing them grow in the studio. Mm. But going on stage and, and get this feedback from the audience, this immediate feedback, you know. You go on stage, you start playing, and you see a couple of thousand people going completely nuts. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, you know, that gives you so much energy. That's, that's for me, by far the highlight of being a musician. So actually, I'm, I'm very looking forward to this. And concerning this, this routine that you mentioned, you know, we try to avoid this by uh, actually changing the set basically every day. You know, oh, we, damn. We That's will, cool. We will, play, we will play like, I don't know, 20 songs maybe, but we prepared, we rehearsed 40 songs. Oh. So um, actually, we are ready to play much more songs that will actually be played in one concert and like this we can change the set a bit every day and like this we can avoid this routine because obviously if you play the same 20 songs every single fucking show for the next one and a half years that would be a nightmare <laughs> I can imagine deadly routine you would fall asleep in the middle of the set because everything would run on autopilot after yeah. two weeks and uh, we don't want that so that's why we, we will change the set a bit every day and like this, keep it much more interesting for us and also for the fans, because we know that we have many fans that come to more than just one show. And like this, they have a guarantee to... Hmm, that's brilliant. I haven't heard anyone else do exactly that, so I think that's brilliant. Yeah, it's not that we change the complete set. But no, no, but the two, three songs or something. Can, exactly, you can change, you know, there, there will be songs, of course, that we have to play. Yeah, of course. There are certain <laughs> classics that just have to be played, even though we even kick those ones out once in a while already. But, you know, um, there are some songs that we want to play. Of course, we want to present new stuff. Yeah. There are some old songs that we want to play again <coughs> that we didn't play in a long time or some maybe we haven't played at all so far. And there are some spots in the set that can just be changed, you know, and 
that's what we like doing.